Grace be Jesus and Mary. Amen. Today's first reading taken from the letter to the Ephesians. St. Paul says that Christ is our peace. He says, second, Ephesians 2, verse 14. The Greek word that the apostle uses for peace there is irene. It's where we get the name Irene from. Irene means peace or harmony. Peace can have two meanings. It can mean the absence of war and conflict, or it can have a deeper significance. The biblical spiritual notion of peace is not so much the absence of war, rather it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. So the peace of Christ is not the absence of something, it's actually the presence of someone. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, says the Apostle Paul, is Love, joy, and peace, Galatians 5, 22. So if the Holy Spirit is present, he brings God's peace with him. A peace which passes all understanding, says St. Paul in Ephesians 4, 7. And that means that we need to be able to take to heart what our Lord said to his apostles at the Last Supper when he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you, said Jesus in John 14, 27. So Christian peace and worldly peace, they aren't the same things. As good and as helpful as the absence of war and conflict is, and everyone appreciates that, uh, the peace of Christ is something more profound and something more important. The peace of Christ is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within our hearts, whether or not there are wars going around us, on around us. If there are wars going on around us or not, it doesn't matter if we have the peace of Christ. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed, says Jesus in Mark 13, verse 7. Why? Because if we are in Christ, then we are reconciled with God, and he will give us his peace. An example of this that comes to mind is St. Maximilian Kolbe, who died in the starvation bunker in Auschwitz during World War II. The starvation bunkers were typically places of despair and uh, desperation and screaming and crying. They were almost like, they were described as being like a foretaste of hell if you were in the starvation bunker. Everything in the concentration camps was actually geared to dehumanizing the people and driving them to despair. When St. Maximilian went into the starvation bunker on his own choice, by his own accord, he brought with him the peace of Christ. And the bunker that he was in with the other 10 men that were condemned to die, it was cell block number 11. That cell block actually became like a chapel. Uh, the men there would actually pray and sing hymns together as they died peacefully one, one after another alongside of St. Maximilian. St. Maximilian, of course, was the last to die. He was put to, in, to death with an injection. So instead of being an antechamber of hell, it actually became an antechamber of heaven, that cell block 11. Why? Because St. Maximilian brought the peace of Christ with him, and he brought the love of Our Lady to that cell. St. Paul says in today's first reading that without Christ we are, and these are the adjectives he uses, he says without Christ we are, Quote, alienated, strangers, without hope, without God, far off, he says in Ephesians 2, verses 12 and 13. But then Jesus Christ became man. He gave his life for us. He died for us on the cross. And now we are reconciled with God. Now there's no more hostility between us and our creator. Jesus has put us back on good terms with God, as St. Paul says in Romans 8, 1, when he, where he says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. If we belong to Christ, if we're striving to live as he tells us to live, then God will not condemn us. Then we're almost like the woman caught in adultery in John chapter 8, where She's about, to be to, she's about to be stoned to death for her sin. She deserves to be stoned to death. But what does Jesus do? He steps in and he saves her just as he stepped in and saved us as well. And then, of course, as we know in the story, when the accusers were all gone away, Jesus then said to her, he says, has no one condemned you? And she says, no one, Lord. 
And he said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. John 8, verses 10 and 11. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, says the apostle. Why? Again, because we now have the peace of God. We have peace with God. And the way that we spread the peace, this peace in the world, is by sharing the gospel with others. You know, first of all, by, of course, taking the gospel to heart ourselves, and then we're able to share it, we're able to spread it with others. When people don't have peace in their hearts, they can turn to unhealthy behaviors like drug and alcohol abuse and either other addictive behaviors. You know, why do they turn to those things? Well, oftentimes it's because they do have pain in their lives that they haven't dealt with, that they don't know, don't know even know how to deal with. They don't know how to resolve it, and they don't know how to find peace. Or they simply don't have any direction in life. They don't have any purpose in life, so they turn to addictive behaviors. There's a saying, the saying is that the drug that serves you today will own you tomorrow. If you've ever heard that before, the drug that serves you today will own you tomorrow. Unfortunately, that happens to a lot of people. Not only do drug use and alcohol abuse and other addictions not resolve our problems, but they, what do they do? They create bigger problems as well. Health problems, but also Problems in our, how we see ourselves, problems in our relationships with others, problems in our spiritual life too, problems in our relationship with God. Instead, instead of escaping into unhealthy habits, what does Jesus want us to do? He wants us to let him be our escape. Jesus should be our escape. He wants us to take refuge in him, not in unhealthy and destructive behaviors. Blessed are all who take refuge in him, says the psalmist, Psalm 2, verse 12. Preserve me, O God, for in you I find refuge, Psalm 16, verse 1. And Psalm 34, verse 22 says, the Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. No one will be condemned who, take ref who takes refuge in Christ. For some people, they even take refuge in overeating, in emotional eating or other things. You know, instead, Jesus, again, he wants us to take refuge in him, to open our hearts to him. If we don't know how to find peace in our hearts and in our lives, then we need to turn to Jesus because he is our peace, says the apostle. If we humble our hearts, if we confess and repent of our sins, we will find God's peace. When we feel anxious or disturbed or hurt or misunderstood or afraid, we need to do the same thing. We need to turn to Jesus and to Our Lady as well. When we're in pain or when we're troubled, we should put ourselves at the foot of the cross with Jesus and with Our Lady. At the foot of the cross, what's, what's there? Well, at the foot of the cross, we are welcomed, we are accepted, we are loved, we are understood, we're appreciated and we're valued as well. We should also put ourselves before the Blessed Sacrament, before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, where we are, again, welcomed, accepted, loved, understood, appreciated, and valued too. True peace is found in Jesus, it's found being near Jesus, and it's found through Jesus. I have said this to you, said our Lord, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, he said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world, said Jesus in John 16, 33. We'll just close this reflection with a nautical illustration for those of you who like to be out on the ocean. If you're out in the midst of the ocean and the storm hits and the surface of the waters go into turmoil and with winds and waves and white caps and rain and all of that. How do you find peace in the midst of that storm? Well, one solution, you know, presuming you're either a fish or you have scuba gear on, uh, one solution is to go down into the depths of the ocean, to dive down or swim down into the depths of the water because toward the bottom of the ocean, everything is calm. Even if on the surface everything is in turmoil, everything is calm. At the bottom, when the storms of life hit us or the difficulties of each day, 
that we struggle with when they hit us, we need to go into the depths of our heart where Jesus himself says that he resides, where the Holy Spirit resides as well. In the depth of our heart, we will find God's peace. The Lord said through the prophet Jeremiah, he said, you will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. Jeremiah 29, verses 13 and 14. May Our Lady grant us the grace to find her son and to find peace in him. And then may she help us to spread that peace to others as well. Praise be Jesus and Mary.